We're here this morning with John Campo, who has a profile on findaguitarteacher.com. Good morning, John. Thanks for talking to us today. Good to you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, can you tell us uh, where you teach? Uh, what city and what state are you in? I'm in uh, New York City, uh, New York, uh, in Manhattan, actually. And uh, do your students come to you, or do you travel to them? Yeah, I teach out of a guitar shop in Greenwich Village called Carmine Street Guitars, run by Rich Kelly. He, he's a luthier there. Got and, it. And, and so, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I get most of my students through there, but I do get them also through Craigslist and a bunch of other places, word of mouth and uh, stuff like that. Of course. So all your students come to see you at uh, Carmine Street Guitars? Well, they get my information there. Um, if, if necessary, uh, some of the younger children like to go to the guitar shop. So children I will teach at the shop. But um, you know, most of the uh, intermediate uh, students and advanced students come here because all my materials here it goes yeah. back, you know, for decades and decades. So it's kind of hard to move it around. Of course, yeah. So most of your students will will come to see you at your place, at your home studio. Right, and then uh, some of the more advanced students end up working with me. Got it. Very good. And uh, can you tell me uh, when students contact you, what kind of styles are they most interested in learning? Oh boy, it runs the gamut. You know, yeah, I um, bet. <laughs> Um, I had one guy come to me at a brand new white Strat, had never picked it up before. Wow. Had never held it in his hands. Oh, that boy. Was, that was kind of tough. <laughs> and uh, what did he say he wanted to learn? He wanted to learn the guitar, you know. I said, but you never picked up the guitar. Why don't you just hold it? Yeah. So I just hold it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, obviously it didn't last too long, but... Um, that, that can you know, happen. And... And you're right, it really does run the gamut uh, when people come to you. Well, um, I, I, try to get people, I try oh. to get people playing. Yes. You know, no matter what they're playing, I, you know, at what level they're at, they come to me and I will start to play. And we'll play maybe an E minor and an A chord and I'll improvise over it. And it gets them into a feeling of what music is supposed to be. It's supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to make you dream dreams and realize your dreams and, you know, be able to do all that stuff, you know. Um, the more advanced students, um, I try to give them the whole concept of the guitar. I have to de deprogram what they've learned already because a lot of the stuff is doesn't has a system to it. I learned the system from uh, a lot of great teachers uh, that most of Jim Hall and all the all the great guitar players have learned from. So I have I know the system, yes. which took me many years to figure out. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of information out there that uh, is extraneous, and a lot of times guitar players make things look harder than they actually are, and I guess, you know, most of the books you get, you look at it and you go, oh, God, I can't play in F sharp, and I can't play in F flat. And so they make things a little bit harder than things are supposed to be. Um, I went to Ted Dunbar at a jazz mobile, and Ted drew a big ear on my music paper, and he said, what does it sound like, you know? And then he taught me the guitar as a C instrument, which it is. It's a C instrument. So you teach everything in the key of C. Yes. Because the guitar is not like a flute, but you have to change your fingering, you know, at each key. Each key is the same. The, yes. The, the scales, the chords, everything is the same. They just appear differently on the, on the neck. So uh, once, once he did that, I was like, oh, man, that's a revelation. So then subsequently when I would go to... Um, to other classes, the first thing a teacher would say to me is play C, play a C chord, and I would play all the C chords. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, okay, get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like what you do is, is with the beginning students, you try to get them doing some hands-on playing right away so that they, and if you said you would improvise over what they're doing, so that they do get that feeling of what it's like to be making music in a group and, and to feel that band-type, song-type feeling. Right. Uh, um, and with your more advanced students, uh, you're saying that the method that you learned, you will take the more advanced students and uh, get them onto that program although it might take some work to kind of get them off 
a mixture of other programs that they might come to you with. Right. You know, I remember being at a jam session once. Uh, you know, when you go to these things, you put your name on the list, and there's some very big names up on stage run these sessions. You know, I played the Blue Note for two years at the jam session after I was jam session with Ted, Ted Curson, and, you know, there'd just be a thousand guitar players there, a thousand horn players there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of wonder, why did they pick me? <laughs> right. And it's, uh, you know, they, guys would come and they'd be so right out of Berkeley and they're playing all this stuff and the band leader doesn't really need a guy to be playing a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. He needs that is supportive and knows how, you know, to play a chart, basically. So um, I found, wow, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for somebody that knows the fundamentals and is supportive because a guitar is part of the rhythm section and you have to act as that and when a trumpet gets up there you play a certain way for a trumpet player you play a certain way for a saxophone player mm -hmm. a certain way for a singer you know and um, those things are very sensitive and it's uh, it has to be taught really well it sounds like the the same reason that the the person running that uh, jam session would choose you would be a similar reason why someone trying to choose one of the many guitar teachers in Manhattan would call you, meaning you offer this fundamental approach that can get people going, and once they get your system down, they can go in any direction they want to. Would you say that's a good assessment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I learned the basic system at the new school. I took their class. I took it once. And then I came back the following year and took it the second time. And the teacher asked me, what, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And I, the first time I wanted to learn the system, but the second time I wanted to see how it was taught. Interesting. So it sounds like even back then you knew that you wanted to, to teach as well as play. Ever since you know I was 13 years old, I was taking lessons and teaching. Interesting. Wow. So you started teaching very early on. Uh, well, yeah. You have to do you have to do a whole lot of things to survive in music. You know, you That's have to teach, true. record. You have to sell instruments, fix instruments, build instruments, um, play weddings, play club dates, play Broadway shows, go on tour. I mean, it's a whole pie chart, you know, <laughs> and you have to try to even out that pie chart. You have a wealth of experience to offer your students, obviously. Yeah, uh, sometimes it gets in the way because a lot of times we'll sit here and talk for an hour. Usually your first lesson lasts three hours because it's um, a whole big thing, you know, and people want to know more, and then I start talking, and it gets it starts getting crazy. Of course. Well, uh, I see you have a guitar on your lap. Uh, what, what styles of guitar do you like to play? Maybe you could play a little bit for us so we could uh, hear the style of music that you like. Um, I really, I, I don't, I... You know, I've been playing so long, I've started playing with my father at the dinner table. He played mandolin and I played tenor guitar and tenor banjo. And, um, it, it's, just, it's just a process. I would just, you know, you get bored with certain things. I became a really good five-string player and I'd go to folk festivals and country shows. And, you know, you just get bored, the instrument becomes um, limited and you want to get to the next thing and you would go to the next thing and the next thing. Uh, I had an album out in the 60s that was pretty popular. I started writing songs and, um, you know, I was in the union playing union gigs and um, uh, composing. You're a composer. Mm -hmm. Composing, yeah. yeah. you know, that's for me um, is at least a third of my repertoire. And then, Got it. Know, uh, the other third is standards. Every standard has a, has a, um, a something that it, you have to overcome and, and learn and it's challenging so standards um the great american songbook of course it's, um you know from bebop down to the blues the the essential that i try to keep in my playing is the is the shuffle the That's old, the old You know that gut-wrenching feel that everybody can relate to. You try to 
standards, you try to put that in, in everything you do. So um, I like to be able to show somebody uh, Bless the child. I, I could show this to a student, and I don't want him to play it like I play it. Mm -hmm. I want to show him the structure of the tune, have him play the melody, and figure out how to play that as a solo piece. And I love when they come back, and I go, wow, I learn more from a student that comes back to me and shows me, hey, look, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, right. I'm playing these partials, and, you know. It's uh, that's very rewarding. I think that's what real real music is. You know, I've I've struggled with a lot of classical pieces. My daughter is an incredible pianist, classical mm -hmm. pianist, reads incredibly, but she can't improvise note one. <laughs> it's just the way she is. Right. But uh, when you um, you know when you can create something out of out of air, it's just so pleasurable. You know, it's very pleasurable. Well, let me ask you, uh, and obviously uh, when a student comes back to you that way and is playing the song in a new way that you hadn't thought of, obviously that's a result of your teaching that you created, you inspired that student to take the song and to, to enjoy it to that level that they would improvise and come up with something new. But can you tell us a, a little bit just about your lessons? Uh, when you work with students, how long are your normal lessons and how often do you work with students? Well, like I say, the first I, the first lesson is a whole block of time. It's at least three hours, mm -hmm. always, maybe more, depending on how the student is. If the student's really receptive, and it, I have the my second guitar player was my student now, and he is amazing now. He's been with me five years, and he does stuff now that I, I'm getting older, and I can't really, you know, like I can't do this for like a long time. Mm -hmm. I did this for many, many years, especially at the jam session. Sometimes we'd have right. 20 horn players would come up, and I'd be playing, you know, with the rhythm section for three hours, like there, you know, there you go. for three hours, you know, just just chonking away. And uh, you know, as you get older, um, now my second guitar player is so amazing. I mean, he, I give him my charts, you know, I give him give him these things, and he just he knows exactly where my head is at you know mm -hmm. this is the way a union chart would look so and even much more complex there might be five chords in a bar or something like that mm -hmm. you know union chart so um i try to i try to write the charts for him so that he uh you know it's in the his level of his capability but he's right. amazing i mean he's he just it's really great. There are a lot of guys that I taught that have gone on and just like forgotten me. I can't even get in touch with them anymore because they're now so famous. But um, you know, it's nice to have have students that I have three or four students that I can call for a job at any time I want now. So it's it's really good. That's wonderful. That's, that's and, and when you're teaching, uh, what are your fees, John? Um, I you know I usually charge fifty dollars just for for a, a lesson. Fifty dollars for an hour lesson? No, I don't go by time. Oh, okay. So fifty dollars for a lesson, and it kind of time, might be an hour. Like I said, the first one is a big block of time. Right. To get them on the program. Once they're on the program, I expect them. I expect them to do the work. You know, because yes. that's what I. I I always came back with my teacher, my lesson done, and I always wanted to to, to solve the next problem, solve the next problem, solve the next problem. So I expect them to come back and, you know, I won't chastise them if they don't, but they'll know that I'm not happy. Right. So the next lesson, you know, is going to be as far as they can go for that next period of time right. until their head's full again. And then I say, okay, you've had enough? <laughs> and then say yes. And, uh, and uh, sorry to cut in, I just wanted to say that... Uh, you're holding a, a beautiful arch top guitar, and I see another one behind you. I, I see a ukulele uh, behind you to your left. 
do you offer guidance to your students? Uh, do you help them to select new guitars, uh, like a beginning student uh, who's looking for a guitar? Can you offer them advice I'm about so that? Glad you asked me that. Please uh, I tell have, us. I have just gotten uh, off of eBay. Actually, I got three beautiful arch tops that I have at the shop that I've customized, and they're at a definite, you know, level. Uh, entry level price, but they are incredible guitars. They're just as good as this. You know, my sin is priceless. Uh, it's like way out of sight for anybody to buy these days. I couldn't even buy one these days. Mm -hmm. I got this for twelve hundred dollars. I think it's worth twelve thousand now. Wow, it's beautiful, John. It really is. It's a lovely uh, guitar. Yeah, uh, Rudy's has really set it up for me too. I had some problems with it. I couldn't figure out, and, and uh, his craftsman over there did. Mm -hmm. And then this one I designed. Because all my other guitars were limited in some capacity. There was, you know, they had a limitation to them. And it always bothered me that I had to bring a certain guitar to a certain gig. I made this, uh, this solid body here, which is probably my best guitar, but solid bodies require a lot of sound. You have to play, you know, a punk rock gig or something like that. And at my age, nobody's calling me for punk rock gigs. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I made this as a combination between my 335 and my L5 because mm -hmm. I was playing the 335, but I wanted to play the L5, but the L5 kept feeding back and it was doing this and 335 was, uh, you had to play it so loud and I was like, man, this is getting crazy. So I, I designed this guitar and Rick helped me and uh, we put it together and uh, it serves everything that I need. It's beautiful, and it's also familiar. I think you might be playing that guitar in the photo that you use for the Find a Guitar Teacher profile. Um, yeah, it's my main, it's my main yeah. big, big guitar. I, you know, I've tried others. I have you know, a bunch of them here. Uh, we even, when we do acoustic acts, I play uh, a gypsy guitar, a D-hole gypsy guitar. Okay. Uh, because a lot, of, a lot of clubs that I play at want to hear acoustic music. You know, they don't. Right. So what I do is when, once I, I go do the first gig with the acoustic guitar and then I show up with that thing later on with a very small, teeny little amp. And, of course. Of because, course. Uh, you know, a lot of restaurants get very loud, especially in Manhattan. That, that's very true. Well, as we begin to wind down the interview, maybe you could play a little bit more. Uh, you mentioned the jazz standards that you love. You also mentioned your own compositions. Maybe you could, uh, if you don't mind, maybe you could play something of your own, like a section of a song, maybe 20 or 30 seconds. It would be a wonderful way to end the interview. John, is that one of your own compositions? Yeah, that's called the Worm, and uh, you can get it on, uh, you know, on online. It's uh, it's available. And that was the Worm, uh, W O R M. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's a beautiful song. Thank you for playing that. And and, and I, yeah, and I want to thank you, John. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, I wanted to ask you: Have you read uh, Aaron Copeland's How, "What to Listen for in Music"? No, I have not. Uh, it sounds like you're recommending it that. It changed my life. 
it really changed my life because I, I had been getting a lot of flack from a lot of other musicians over different things I was doing and I read that book and Aaron Copeland just like he, he, he made everything I said a fact and it, I recommend that it's just an amazing 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 book everybody else should read that book I'll keep that in mind. Uh, thank you very much for the recommendation. And, and John Campo, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. It, it's such a pleasure to meet you and to talk to you about your guitar teaching and also to hear you play, uh, especially to hear your original composition, The Worm, that you were playing at the end. That's a beautiful kind of swing blues jazz piece. It, it, it was lovely. So thank, thank you again and want to wish you best of luck in your continued guitar teaching and career. Yes, let's stay in touch. We certainly will, John, and, and have a very good day today. Take care now. and look Thanks. Forward. Thank you, and we'll see you soon on Find a Guitar Teacher as well. Have okay, a good John. one. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>